Why don't we just get started? Yeah, that's what I said. I hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel threatened. I need a little luck of the Irish. There you go, Stu. I like it. Top of the morning to you. Oh, there we go. I'm All right, we'll start right there. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems. And, and let's be honest, also helping you locate the next beer that you should be drinking or avoiding, like the plague. So it's funny you guys started out right there by... Going on that St. Patrick's Day thing. Do you see what both of you did immediately? Uh, something uh, tried, racist. Tried to be Irish and we're not. Yeah. You both immediately appropriated <laughs> culture. And that is what St. Patrick's Day is all about. <laughs> yeah. It is the it is the holiday that everybody appropriates a culture and everybody goes, yeah, fun. It's okay with it. And the worst part and about the negative it is. Stereotypes. And it's only the negative <laughs> stereotypes. Nobody boils well, What's the positive it. part of Irish people? Can you yeah, like us? expound on that? Yeah, write a poem. Some of the, some of the mm. finest literary minds in the history of the world have come out of Ireland. No one is so in touch with their raw emotion and depth of sadness to be able to write in the way that the Irish do. So that would be my, my, my counter argument to that. Sounds like a blast. The drunks sound more yeah. fun. But that's the problem, right? <laughs> everybody goes, everybody then just, just caters to the worst stereotype. Like, what's everybody do? They're like, okay, it's St. Patrick's Day. Let's buy beer. Green beer. Well, yeah. Or, or Guinness or, yeah. or, or Killian's, which is not even Irish. <laughs> People go running out and they buy, they buy Fosters. beer. And then they make... They make corned beef and cabbage, and they call, they call Which is that disgusting. It's fantastic. Well, a little green eggs and ham never hurt. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> so skating on thin ice over there, Stu. Right, Stu. I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. but it's it, I find it so interesting that that's what everybody does. Everybody appropriates. No it, one cares. And no one complains, and all they do is is the worst of it. Are you going to put green food coloring in your pancakes for your girls on St. Patrick's Day? No. Just saying, people do that. It's a Tuesday. I'm going to get up, I'm going to get them <laughs> on the bus, and I'm going to work. Uh, I think it's a Wednesday, It's right? Wednesday. Yeah. It's, it's Wednesday. a Wednesday. <laughs> you'll work, and then at noon you'll start. The true Irish beer, people right? celebrate the day before. <laughs> that, yeah. Because we don't want to get caught up in your your amateur hour. That is how people celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Well, this year we won't have to worry about it. No, There's not going to be any big festivals I know, in the man. streets. We used to have some great festivals. I mean, it's no you know, yeah. uh, Savannah. But we Richmond had a few good Irish festivals. I like that we had two big ones. Yeah. Right. We had one that was just debauchery. And they worked on different weekends. Like, yeah. we mm-hmm. spread it out. Like, it was, I you mean, did one before. St. Patrick's Day is a couple weeks long here yeah. in Richmond. <laughs> yeah. You do one the weekend before, which is debauchery. Yeah. And then the weekend after, you do the one that's out by, by the churches. Yeah. And, it's like, they do, they do beautiful music, and they do dancing, yeah. and it's just... You know, it's, it's, for the the kind of, it's for the kids. But it's people get rowdy there, too. They do. But it's, it's not on the level. same level. Yeah, yeah, it's a different level of rowdy. The other one is like uh, people vomiting on you the streets. You shouldn't take your kids to kind that of thing. One. No, no, you shouldn't even go to that one. No. That's, that's a rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one, people like have a couple beers, but also seek out turkey legs. Yeah. What's yep. more Irish than a turkey leg? There's a lot of... And funnel uh, cake. <laughs> funnel cake. A truly <laughs> Irish delicacy. There's a lot of vendors selling stuff. Now, to be honest, the Shamrock the Block, I haven't been since it moved. Did you ever go to the Boulevard one? I've, I've been to every incarnation. I haven't been to it since it moved. Is, this, is it just as rowdy and crazy as it was before when it was in the bottom? I can't imagine it's nearly as rowdy. I mean, when it was in the bottom, it was... That it's, was fun. It's every bit as rowdy. The difference being is that it doesn't spill over after into bars yeah. causing fights. So it actually, it's more contained it's in capped. the sense that it ends. It has a has a time limit. And then everybody scatters about the whole city. Yeah. Whereas before... Because there's only a couple bars. Well, now there's a lot of bars within walking distance of there. Yeah, but most of the breweries are shutting yeah. down before. Yeah. It's a very different, different vibe, but yeah, it, that's exactly how it went. It Way was, more pe- when it was in the bottom, more people could just walk to it. There's more housing down there than. But if you if you look at like fights and things, yeah, that stuff still happens because yeah, people seem to it's, think that the fighting Irish, hell, Notre Dame is literally their mascot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the <fighting laughs> I mean, gosh, it's ridiculous. 
Maybe I should be the one to cancel <laughs> St. Cancel. Patrick's Day. Canceled. Because? Because appropriating culture. Canceled. Come it's, on. It's not that big. I mean, it's the closest thing I can say outside of I'm an American. I'm, I, I've got Irish blood in me, presumably. Haven't taken a DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, every- You have Irish culture. Every indication that I've been given is that I'm. You identify as Irish. I can tell you that. I clearly identify yeah. as Irish. Yeah, from Arizona. <laughs> Actually, I'm Irish by way of Canada. If you want to yeah. get technical, we came over from the motherland. We? Yeah, the family, uh -huh. the Kennedy clan, came over from County Cork, Ireland, to Canada. So I'm also Canadian. <laughs> you are the worst. I'm that chalk is. it up. <laughs> yeah. So. From Canada to then, like, God, now i got to add Canada into the whole Irish, Northern Virginia, Chicago, Canada. Arizona, now Canadian slash rva -er. In Richmond, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, but checks out. Clearly, I'm from Canada. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I do. Yeah. Now I understand. That's why you're so nice. Now I understand that's the mustache and beard. This thing has got to go. <laughs> I hate this. It you're full on Canadian. Cornelius. <laughs> From uh, Rudolph. Oh, yeah, it is. It's amazing the amount of things that people call me. Like, I'm shocked when people see me. They always, I haven't heard that one. I hear a different one every day where somebody finds a very pleasant way to insult the way I look. Hmm. Well, you, you're shaving you're it to look that way. Like, you're keeping your beard shorter than your mustache, and your beard is now yeah. 62, <laughs> and your mustache <laughs> is 47. My beard so, is old. Yeah, your beard. Yeah. I mean, your beard's straight ninety percent. Plus, you're gray. Plus you're, you're making yeah. your you're making your mustache go horizontal, not vertical. Not during the workday. I comb it down <laughs> so that it just looks like I don't have teeth. That's the yeah. one thing I've noticed. The mustache is so long; it goes over my lip. Mm. It looks like I'm toothless. Yeah, which is not a it's great a good look. look. <laughs> not a great look. Yeah, mine no. was so long. I finally had to get it trimmed. I couldn't take it any longer. I hate it. I hate it. I actually was going to shave it tonight so you guys could, could see me just in a mustache, and then I was going to shave it off after the weekend. And then I found out that I'm supposed to be somewhere next weekend where everyone will have big beards. I want to show off uh, my mustache. Nice. So I will show off my mustache Diet. next week. Diet dark. Yeah. Go something crazy. I think when everything else is shorn, it'll stand out. It will. On but its you, own merit. If you got some light brown... Uh, <laughs> just for men i think if you if yeah. you ran it through there it looked pretty cool get some maybe um, so but i kind of like the frosted tips i got a little m m thing going on, got on a little jt there. a little justin timberlake <laughs> yeah, like instinct senior, <laughs> JT <laughs> senior. <laughs> his great grandfather <laughs> well, i'm justin <laughs> Back in my original. Day. yeah i can I see i can see your wife walking into the bathroom and going what's this Autumn, summer. I was lead <laughs> yes. singer in a big band. We had a barbershop quartet. First one. Yeah. So I guess no one has any plan. We're recording this before St. Patrick's Day, but being that it's on a Wednesday and there's no no festivals, I guess no one's Yeah, they anything, canceled right? it. They canceled, but I mean. Were they ever going to have? I, I, was something on I the books? I saw just two days ago know. they said they were canceling the Irish Festival. I didn't know anything festival. was on the books. It was canceled again. Second I, time. I would have assumed that anyway. Yeah. Next year it would I be guess. vengeance. Three years of pent up Irish rage. Speaking of. Uh oh. Not necessarily. Stu segue. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> ran into our uh, good friend. It's easy for you uh, to say. The owner of Penny Lane Pub. Yeah. Okay, Terrence. Ran, ran into his wife, chit chatted okay. with her, Lisa. and they said things are going well. They're on the uptick. They're going to make it through. It's good oh, stuff. Oh, that's actually really good because to hear. Because we had discussed a little bit of there that they were thinking about a possible move to survive, and that's yes. not happening. They're, they, Nationals going to start showing some shows. Things are on the uptick, and good to hear that they don't have to go anywhere. Which is unfortunate yeah. because I wanted them. They were talking about moving closer <laughs> to my house. So. Within a mile of your house? I would have been able to ride a bicycle there, yeah. which would have meant I would have been in the Penny Lane pub more often. So which, that would have been nice. Of course, for sure. Which bodes not, well for you. That's probably not good for the career now that you say that. Like I don't I don't need any more bar time. No. Well, I don't know. I haven't been to a bar in a year, so yeah. maybe I do. Yeah. But you, you think once we get to a point where everything is – somewhat open back up or more lenient i got a feeling that the companies unfortunately a ton of them didn't make it but the ones that like a penny lane or similar that made it they're going to have this six month probably boom 
of where everybody's like, oh, I'm going out. I'm going to go do stuff. And if it's they remember and, how to shoo. how to keep it lean and mean, they'll be they'll be well, more profitable than they've ever been. I, yeah. I, I, Stu, I agree with you. Not to shit on your point. I just think some people are never going back to doing those things. Like, I'm yes, going to do it less. There's going to yeah. be people well, that go, but I, from what I'm hearing or talking to people, a lot of people are like, I may never go to a concert again. I may never do. Oh, this, I'll like, be doing that. But I have, there's yeah. part of me that like, someone brought something the other day. He's like, you want to go to a bar? And it wasn't even the reaction of, well, no, it's a pandemic. It was, ugh, no. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, what, what happened to me? Yeah, you've conditioned <laughs> yourself over the past year. Because, oh, by the way, this is about the year anniversary of the whole shit show it, start. It, it so. is. Yeah, happy anniversary, everybody. Yeah. Enjoy Congratulations. That. You made it to the one year anniversary of... Lock it down for two weeks until the curve flattens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think that I think I have kind of, I guess, it is desensitized. We all have. I, I mean, the I, if I got invited to go out, I pro, I'm more likely just to be like, oh, I'll hang with the neighborhood people or I'll go over rent. Like, I, my, my circle never would, as I've gotten older and had a family, my circle shrunk anyway, but it's smaller now and I've kind of acquiesced to it. Like, it's not even yeah. like... I don't feel like I'm missing much. Like, isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. Well, but at the same time, that does go along with. Uh, granted, I give you that it is the pandemic and the ideas of, you know, we're not going to go out. Just and you get transitioned to thinking that way. But I would also say that as we age, getting to forties, fifty, it's not like we want to. No, I think it's a natural transition where you're like, oh, I got my, I, I have settled in with my friends. I know what I want to do. I don't have to go to the bar and be crazy, crazy with. Yeah, but the three of, of us, I mean, you've been going out, and the three of us always go to bars and restaurants, like in concerts, like that. It's never. I haven't missed all the restaurants because yeah. my wife is like such a, a crazy restaurant person. Yeah. That, you know, I was in restaurants constantly and yeah. spending a boatload of money. I'm kind of fine with leaving the restaurant situation where it is but the bars i i i do miss going out with the guys i think the one change is like i saw the new the chick-fil-a that remodeled right here at the mall Uh uh-huh like i don't think fast food is going to be completely they they did away with their window service they open they have a sliding glass door where the kids go in and out to bring your food like they completely revamped everything to be super fast they're all going to the sonic it's a sonic model Yeah. yeah i mean like where the window is that they would usually hand your food out it's a double sliding door. Oh, I cannot and wait to like, see that. Can they got four on lanes going? Skates. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> no, I think yeah. Sue's right. I think the fast food model. They are gonna if they don't get rid of seating a hundred percent, it'll drop down to you know twenty five percent of what it once was. Like, yeah, don't come in here. Get your food and move. I mean, along. if you cut your brick and mortar cost by seventy five percent, and you're just a drive yeah. through like a Sonic or a, a Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. Well, you know that's why that's why Domino's was always successful when they started yeah. in the eighties. They never Little had. Caesars. Yeah, same Little way. Caesars, I think, kind they of had bit some seats. off of Domino. Domino's never had Not seats. Domino's, yeah. Oh, Little Caesars, yeah, you could. There were some you could eat in. Yeah. But Domino's entire business model was we're only delivery. Yeah. You can't have it any other way. We'll have it there in thirty minutes. Well, I mean, the Papa John's whole, closest to here is a is a takeout joint. Like, you can't sit down in it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that model worked for. Actually, the, aren't all Papa Johns like that? Can you sit in a Papa? I feel like I've never sat in a Papa John's. No, I'm I'm, a sh- I'm I'm sure somewhere there's a full size there's a whatever, bench. but like there's usually a bench yeah, to you know, sit at you and wait it, for your pizza I, to come. I think Papa John's bit off the Domino's thing and and Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut was the best, man. Pizza Hut has a dope restaurant. Yeah, you get a get a pitcher of beer. You get that yeah. red and white checkered tablecloth. Play had some a, had some cool games. Had uh, those fresh breadsticks. They got that yeah. soft ice. The yeah. guy making yeah. pizza had Turt a cigarette ice. in his mouth. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> they had the dope <laughs> old school uh, chandeliers. Yeah, there was like the like the kind. Uh, it's like stained glass. You yeah, see yeah. over yep. a pool table. Yep. It was over your table. Table. No sneeze guards because <laughs> who needs that? This is the hut. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it's done. <laughs> what was it? When was it that the Domino's they stopped doing their thirty minute delivery? Because they, because they had an accident, or something. and yeah, they, they were like, going to stop accidents. the time. They were the first ones to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> the Noid. The, yeah. Oh, the, the Noid. The, the Noid. Noid. Uh, yeah, the Noid got canceled. Damn. And he should have. I mean, reckless son of a bitch. I was listening I to a, a, a an old podcast of ours, and I forget who it was. Was it Taylor who didn't eat pizza for an entire year? He didn't eat cheese. 
Yeah. And so oh. he got rid of pizza. He said that was the hardest part of giving up cheese was giving and, up pizza. And listening back to it, I still lost my mind because it still yeah. sounds like almost an impossible feat to not eat pizza for a year when, like, pizza is that, like... Staple, dude. Everybody, <laughs> you got a group of people coming over, order a bunch of pizzas. Like, that's just... So, I can tell you the exact opposite of that story. My next-door neighbor for 15 years, he he's... Uh, I'm 47. He's 49 gross, now. Gross. He literally... I mean, in the entire time I knew him and his wife said the same thing. He never ate anything outside of pasta or pizza his entire life. I mean, the entire time I've known the man. Was he Russian? No. Papio, Italian. Uh, no, I wouldn't. That I, I tried. I tried. I thought <laughs> yeah. Russian. But either way, he's, doing, he's done it his entire life, and I come to find out just about a month and a half ago, his gallbladder exploded. <laughs> And no. he had to have it removed. Why? Because <laughs> he literally, I was like, and we always used to joke about it, but he just doesn't like anything. Yeah, now the jokes aren't as My funny. best friend, yeah. my childhood friend, his parents were divorced, and he went over to his dad's house every Wednesday from the time he was 8 to 18, and every Wednesday it was pizza night. Like, <laughs> like it was. Yeah. Hell yeah, I don't want to waste my time. I got my yeah. kid one night. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not wasting my time. But my out. bigger point is, would what would you eat? What could you eat every day, all day long, and never change up? Uh, pizza. <laughs> I love pizza, dude. You, you, I mean, but think about it. No, I'm not like that, though. I change things up. Yeah, there's nothing you I can't I can imagine eat. that. But I mean, I own a pizza oven. Like, I like yeah. Yeah. pizza. Oh, I, do, I, love, I mean, I had pizza just yes, two days ago. You know what's but, extremely disturbing? I didn't know this about this particular house that I bought, and I've been here years now, but... I don't have a Pizza Hut that delivers to this house. I am in the dead this zone? little oh, tiny really? dead zone between like three Pizza Huts that none of them will come to me. And ever since they've released this Detroit style pizza, I want to try that uh, thing, dude. Dude, it's got had it. 80 pieces of pepperoni on each pie. Nice. 80. And I sold my daughter on that like an idiot. I was like, use, 80 my, use my address. Come to my house. Then well, I, I guess I could. I could go over there and get it because I did. I actually looked Or up, you could hang out with me. No, I can't do that. <laughs> All right. Wait, is the Pizza well, Hut's the Pizza Hut's not open still right beside the liquor store in Midlothian, is it? No. I guess not. That's a long so, time yeah. gone. Because that would have been the one that would have delivered to you. I don't know. Unfortunately, and then no Pizza Hut here, so I would have to go and get it. The problem is I don't start craving pizza till about three beers. Yeah. And then I go, mm-hmm. ooh, I want a pizza. And then it's like, well, you shouldn't drive. Well, in our guys yeah. our age, people our age, like Pizza and Chinese has been the 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 Grubhub of all Grubhubs. Like that's yeah. been the food. Like, and Grubhub they don't they don't do anything with like a Grubhub, so I can't yeah. actually <laughs> get someone to go pick it up and drive it to. I me. can still probably say I haven't paid yeah. any of those assholes one nickel. Cause good for and you. I never will. And my wife still every weekend. It's like both nights she's not cooking. Dude, it's ridiculous though. The cut. go pick something up. Yeah, because the cut that they well, so I take that out of the restaurant. Yeah. I mean, it's like forty percent off yeah. of their. Now I go. Pick well, that's that's the, that's between them and them, the restaurant and the Grubhub. I don't give. I'm not. I'm not. Right, like, I'm saying uh, you want to support the local. I'm not though. a restaurant hero. I'm not saying I don't give them money because the restaurant. I'm, I fear. I, I'll take my money. I'll save my money no matter what. So yeah. I don't, I'm not really here acting like I'm a restaurant guy. Like you're just cheap. I'm just, well, I'm just like yeah. I'm not going to pay somebody. To drive two miles when I could just go do it, like it's and save yourself six yeah, seven dollars. Yeah. yeah, that's easy. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, you may be right. I just on the weekends, you know, if I've had a drink, I won't go. That's yeah, just kind of my because the Pizza Hut I grew up in, that I loved going to was the one on Midlothian by the mall, and the other one that was just taken over by Chicken Fiesta. As long as we're not getting too local with the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I, you're in a spot. If you've been to one pizza, pizza Hut, they've yeah. all you've been to all Pizza Huts. Well, I don't plan on eating out as much because I bought that grill. I got my, I got my. Weber yeah, you did. My, I saw wait. the Yeti bucket full of what I thought was uh, horse feed. But, <laughs> I finally have a use for the Yeti bucket because it has that dope top on it. Wait, your grill's not in Illinois anymore? No, my grill finally made it. I of course I had to call them. <laughs> it was on its way from Elgin, Illinois, and I had to call them up, and I was like, hey, you know. It was supposed to be delivered by original estimate like two days ago. So any ideas what's going on? And they're like, huh, yeah, that doesn't see. And then miraculously, like just, out of uh. nowhere, the, <laughs> la- the lady's on the phone with me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it just it just seemed to disappear. 
somewhere between Elgin, Illinois, and and your warehouse, and I just, you know, are you able to find any kind of updates on that? Is that where the grill's made comes from, or where is it? Yeah, made in Elgin, Uh, Illinois. Okay, okay. And so, (laughs) they just, you just figured out that it's a Chicago thing. No, no, I'm just thinking to myself, like, how many times has that happened where it says it's six to eight weeks delivery time, and they just deliver it to you two days before it's supposed to show up? Oh, this was like, (laughs) they said it would be, it would be three to five days to the door. And I waited seven business days before contact. Yeah. Like, all right, guys, I think it might be lost. And she's like, "Boy, you know it. It hasn't shown up. This is. I don't know what to tell you. I'm looking through. Boy, um, that's not something then, that falls between the seats either. Like that's yeah. like, <laughs> it's a mat. It's on a pallet. Yeah, you know. And so she's like, "Yeah, it's, it's probably multiple boxes. It's not here. She's like, "I'll make some calls. And then out of nowhere, boom. I could have it delivered on Friday. And I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. Sitting mm. on your bay, isn't it? Yeah. So collecting dust. Either way, <laughs> it got here, but it was delivered on a Friday, which, you know, you have to build it. It's literally just in a in a box. It's okay. a big ass grill. Yeah. And all the parts. Is it like on a pallet it's that big? Literally on a pallet. Oh shit. Yeah. The guys brought it up and like dropped it off and I'm like in between two meetings at work and they just happened to come at the right time. <laughs> Ran downstairs, had like that. I don't think guys are capable of dropping off something like a giant pellet smoker without just kind of standing around. Let me see and, what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of like nod their head a little bit. Yeah. Like all of a sudden they're like, so uh, pellet smoker, huh? And I'm like, it is. And the other guy comes over, he's like, going to be eating good. And I'm like, this is my kind of small talk right yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. And so we sat out there for five minutes, like just talking just awkwardly. Just looking at a box. And just talking. looking at a box. And they're like, it says it can sear and smoke. Cool. Yeah. So is it, is it, this is not Amazon or UPS or FedEx. It's just two guys delivering on a truck. Oh yeah, big white you just know, <laughs> truck just showed up with no markings on it. Yeah, it's from Chicago. It's from Illinois. <laughs> yeah, probably Let's fell think. off the back of a truck. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope not. I paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> but so I do plan on cooking on that more. But I had to build the damn thing, and it showed up on a Friday. And of course, I'm all antsy. Like, I want to get it built. Plus, I don't think my wife's going to be too keen on, and I'm not too keen on my grill just sitting in a box on a pallet in the driveway. Yeah. You know, so we were, like, hanging out Friday night because I had to go back to work. I didn't get off work till like, 6, 6.30, I would say. And I'm downstairs. You know, the sun is setting. It's getting freezing cold outside. That night was, like, 25 degrees. Oh, yeah, it was quite Mm. cold. Did you fire it up to keep you warm? This is before the warm <laughs> snap came. Yes. And so, and then my kids are like, well, we want to watch WandaVision, do all this stuff. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 get dinner. How are your kids into WandaVision? Ah, oh, they love it. Really? I haven't seen it, but I don't under, like, from what I've seen, I don't see, like, it's a kid show? Well, it's Marvel, right? No, it's Marvel Universe, but it, the way it starts, like, the first two episodes are very kitschy. Yeah. And so they were like, ha, 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 this is kind of cute. And then it's slowly. But they don't understand the premise that it's like set in like 50s era television right like they were kind of getting it because i guess the kids in school were talking about it uh-huh. so they'd i'd be like oh it's the 60s this week yeah and then they'd come back and be like it was the 60s and so they i guess the kids were watching it but they were psyched you know they were so they were like we need to watch this season finale i'm like all right i get it and like let's watch this and like my wife's like pouring drinks and we're eating and having a good old time and it was like 10 30 when it was all said and done and my wife's like well i'm going to bed and i could not get the itch to build the grill out of my damn head you were like a kid on christmas yeah couldn't couldn't wait and so finally they're all like going to bed and i'm like where's my headlamp (laughs) i gotta build a grill (laughs) so i i i went out there and started building a grill at 10 30 at night like th- that's when the first the cellophane was cut off of the box. That is so, and it was so cold it, that night. Yeah, freezing and cold. It was brutal. You're, you're you the guy couldn't that, have paid me to do that. Like yeah. honestly, I was psyched, dude. I was psyched. I started taking it apart, and then when I got it, all the warnings are like two person job, two person step <laughs> step one. They're like move this two hundred and four pound grill onto its side yeah. gently. Now, so you don't yeah. scratch it, and I'm like. Step one is sober oh. adult use only. It's two <laughs> sober adults put together in daylight, and I think exactly. to myself, I can I can lift it, 
And so immediately, like, humped that big bad boy up on its side, gently, got it all going, start building legs and stuff. And it, I, I, I actually, I fibbed when I said I grabbed my headlamp first. It didn't even occur to me to get a headlamp till closer to midnight <laughs> because all the other stuff was like kind of big yeah. and it was in the driveway and I had like a spotlight on it. Yeah. But then after I got all the legs on and all the stuff, you I got like the small pieces out. Yeah. Then I had to move it. I moved it into the yard and then it was like, okay, now I need to start like assembling the electrical stuff, all the little things. I'm like, I can't see anything back here. That's not good. I got the fire roaring over here. I got music pumping beers in hand yeah i'm building a grill <laughs> dude that took me till after two in the morning and somewhere around just before i got the headlamp there's a lot of sheet metal in there sheet metal corrugated sheet metal right. like for different yeah. parts and you can really cut yourself pretty good oh yeah on that stuff if you're not paying attention to what you're doing or if it's dark but you were in perfect setting inebriated. to do all this. yeah so you're <laughs> you can't see it's yeah. dark and so you could understand that i probably had a tremendous wound on my hand because there's sheet metal everywhere yeah. but i actually didn't even cut myself on the sheet metal i'm ashamed to say i got the world's worst cardboard cut oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while avoiding the sheet metal yeah. and so like i just ran my hand along this one piece of cardboard and my whole finger sliced open and at first i was like ah not bad dude i bled like a stuck pig for like two and a half hours all over the new grill like after i finally finished assembling it mm. i then Do these ribs have a touch of hepatitis <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice are these good all the stainless steel surfaces it on it. Tastes a little metallic. The next morning, everybody's, everybody's like, oh, I love the paint scheme. <laughs> the trippy. Cool. Yeah, I bled like a stuck paint. Is this dude. Dexter themed? <laughs> yeah. I paid more for that. So I was sitting home tying one on, and I Marco Polo Brenton. I don't even know what time. It had to have been after midnight. And he yeah, come, who knows? And he comes back outside with his head like a pulling like, I'm outside putting the, putting the grill together. And I'm like, what is going on? Like That's 25 hilarious. degrees. I'm it underneath so the thing. so cold, yeah. It so was, have you fired it up to use it yet? I have, and does it work properly after this type of assembly? I think I'm going to so. say no and no. <laughs> I have fired it up to season the grill. That's all I've done. But I haven't actually cooked on it. I'm like, I'm, I'm psyched to cook on it. Well, but. you might want to burn off all the blood first. Yeah, I'm yeah. not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. That'll Detail. take care of itself. There is like blood smears though, like on the stainless steel. It's it's very awkward looking, unfortunately. Nice. But you and, can stain that stainless steel. And when I tell the when I tell the story, it will be the corrugated metal that I oh, yeah. cut my hand open mm. so brutally. But you know, just between us friends. Yeah. It was definitely it was a, car, a cardboard a cardboard cut. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was not very manly. But the next What's, time what? you hear this story in public, I'll yeah. be like, there's metal everywhere, dude. Yeah. Of course you're going to get injured. I'm in the dark. 25 degrees, yeah. freezing outside, of course. No, that's the deer I killed right on top of the grill and then cooked it. Yeah. <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> Boom. Smoking some venison. Done. Yeah. Actually, it looks like the cut is almost healed. Nice. Looking good. Yeah, so I got that thing done, and then... It was about two in the morning when I finished it up. And then I looked around at the carnage that was left. You know, there's boxes within that box. Every component's in a box. And yeah, some of those so boxes. So doesn't rub all up against each other and, and scratch And some it of the up. boxes have a box within it. And then a lot of them have like. Nesting the, doll. The honey, box. Yeah. honeycomb cardboard, like as like buffers and everything. Yeah. Was there a lot of styrofoam left over? And there's no styrofoam. No styrofoam? All of it oh, was just... like actually. Because it's made in Chicago. So there's no styrofoam. It's good for the environment. They don't do plastic. That's right. So it's all like honeycomb cardboard wedged yeah. in between pieces. And I'm looking around at the carnage at 2 in the morning, and it's like there is boxes everywhere. Tell like, me you threw it and burned it because burnt, that stuff goes great. Dude, I burnt every last box because I had the fire going. Corrugated cardboard just oh, puts yeah. up so much heat. I was like... Ooh, I've got an idea. Because I was like, I've, I started breaking down the boxes to put them in the recycling. The recycling's already like Overflowed, filled up. Yeah. So I'm like, I've got it. I need to cauterize my wound. For an entire <laughs> hour, I stood there 
just throwing cardboard in <laughs> and then just folding up into neat pieces that would fit in the fire pit and chucked them in. And I just sat there and drank all the heaviest beers nice. that were out here, like all the delis that had failed. Oh, you like the new the Belgian oak spire that had been soaked in bourbon barrels. Yeah, I was like, because my logic at the time was you're not going to be drinking much. So you may as well get yourself a strong, heavy kind of like hearty winter beer because yeah. it is 25 degrees where you right. are. And this would be good. So (laughs) the logic was sound because I wasn't drinking much. But then I had kind of a taste for heavy beers. And so when 2 a.m. hit and it was fire time, Mm. that was problematic. And then your hands weren't busy putting together a grill. (laughs) Boy, was it cold out there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I didn't notice that till too. So the fire really helped. Like I got it. I got it just raging. So it was an hour of just burning stuff, staring at the grill, beaming with pride and and a flame over my head behind me with my headlamp on still because it's still pretty dark and i just was like i have created fire yeah i was like i've created grill (laughs) and fire now if i could just get them together i could do meat brendan and (laughs) i told him this he's the only person in the world that would have done that i know like he's like i can't imagine any of my anyone else i know not even friends i will say i don't know anyone that would do that I I'm, pretty, I'm pretty handy at putting that shit together, like Ikea furniture. I like stuff. putting that shit I, together. I can do it without even looking at the directions sometimes. But what I have started at 25 degree weather at 1030 at night, knowing it's going to be Yeah, free. a four-hour project. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. all you. I'm surprised the one burner didn't look like a wheel or something. <laughs> if you put it I mean, we'll rightly. see. I do know that the flavorizer bars were like, it's like the last step. And you put them in, and apparently they, this is not going to mean anything to anybody, but there's like these little spots where you put them in and I was putting them in wrong. And I kept being like, this is the shoddiest shit. I had this like extreme depressed moment. Like, yeah, this is so shoddy. Like, why would they do this? Uh, and then, I like that you immediately turned it on them. Not the yeah. drunk guy at two yeah, in the yeah. morning, yeah. like in the dark. It occurred to me that I was off by about an inch where they go. Yeah. And there's <laughs> actually like little hooks and they sit it's, perfect. Yeah. And it's a, and then last night I was on Reddit because now I've just been like scrolling through Reddit about this stuff. And I finally found a guy last night. He's like, my flavorizer bars suck, dude. They keep falling in. And they're like, they shouldn't fall. And then he sent a picture and everyone's like, ah, you don't yeah. have them in the right place. You're, You're such a <laughs> loser, like, ah, dude. Exactly I totally what I did. <laughs> knew what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. You did not. Let me give you the inside info. Yep. Nerd. <laughs> yeah. You got to put them over here, dude. Meanwhile, Brendan's calling customer service at 1 a.m. <laughs> Brendan's like, <laughs> Brendan's like, lol, I remember my first grill. Yeah. Or, Have your wife help you out, loser. <laughs> exactly how I felt looking down at my phone, yeah. down my nose, down at my phone, down on that man. Uh, <laughs> loser. Yeah. Jeez Louise. That's so when's the, when are you going to fire up? What are you going to cook first? Ribs tomorrow. The girls wanted ribs, which I hate doing ribs. But you know what? I've got the pellet grill. It should work. Why do you hate doing ribs? I just I have a hard time knowing when they're done. And Dude, like, I can't cook anything anymore. Like, mm. I, my burgers are undercooked half the time I'm cooking <laughs> now. Like, I just, I don't know what. And I've yeah. never, I've never cooked like a butt or ribs or anything like that on a fancy grill. I've never, I'm impressed with people that can cook like that. Well, this thing's a bit of a cheat, you know, because it's got probes and stuff. Yeah, but still, still like, you yeah, still have to figure app. it out. I have an yeah. app that's like, hey, it's going to be done in two hours. I would mess that up. What do we do before apps? I don't know. Yeah. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> we weren't around. <laughs> yeah. We're young, Stu. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Gen Z, uh. bro. That's why I'm canceling you. So I'm Gen Z. <laughs> I'm young. You can't cancel me. I young can. I can, Eminem. You better, you better slow your roll. I got roll. a new album coming out. <laughs> yeah. Tell you all about it. Hey, nice tight pants, dork. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't like the cuff? <laughs> You don't know, man. You're such a simp. <laughs> <laughs> well, that turned quickly. <laughs> All my Gen Z folks know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that dude's a simp. <laughs> yeah, so the grill mm. is done. Congrats. Good. So, and tomorrow we officially. What are you going to do Friday and, night at two in the morning now? And when's your payment plan over? <laughs> Trust me, I'll find. Oh, I get it. Well. <laughs> well, now that you're a grill nerd, you're all, everybody I know that has those Big green eggs, they get up at 2 in the morning and start fucking cooking. So you're going to be doing that. Yeah, but I can Ooh. turn it on with my app. 
Yeah, so I don't still, have to go out in the cold still ever gotta again. Go out there. You <laughs> got to put the meat on. I was going to say, no. does the meat go on with the app? <laughs> yeah. It makes meat. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that is worth the money. Yeah, no, it's like uh, test tube meat. I feel stupid now. You're in that synthetic stage now. Yeah, I just have to tell it on Tuesday that I want there to be a brisket in there on Friday. Yeah. Because it takes a while to synthetically make the of meat. Of course, science. I mean, it takes time. Yeah. It's like a 3D printer with just meat proteins. Yeah. Burr, 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 oh, burr. Amazing. Brisket. <laughs> it's good. Gonna be so good, and that—that's probably not that far. I was just oh, thinking no, the same already, thing. I, hate I think the they are doing that. I think yeah. they are doing that. You'll be able to 3D print a brisket. Just start it on Tuesday. You'll be—it'll yeah. be done. It'll turn on yeah. and be like brisket's done. Fire up. It'll be delicious yeah. too. I'm sure. It Cow- will. <laughs> Cows are celebrating everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> yeah, we'll be like nope, neutered. Yeah. That's how we roll now. Once we don't want too many of them. Yeah, and that poor little dog got neutered this week. Oh yeah, how'd that go? That oh. little, I mean, it went horribly for him. <laughs> he doesn't know. He's been here for like what two weeks, and then we were yeah. like, "Oh, that's gonna suck." Because he's deaf, they sneak up behind him and just. Oh. <laughs> he didn't know it's coming. <laughs> poor dude, I feel so bad neutering animals. Like I understand that there's like there's a point to it. But yeah. It, I. It, I, so if I change the word neuter and just started calling it castration, yeah, it feels worse, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it hurts more. Yeah, <laughs> like I, yeah, like I just tensed up. I just tensed up yeah. in my pants. Like, oh, I'm gonna go castrate my dog tomorrow. Like, why? Why would yeah. you do such a thing? Like, it's it's a horrible. It's the exact same thing. Literally. <laughs> yeah. But we have this nice word because Bob Barker said it every five yeah. days a week for thirty spader, years. Get your spader. Yeah. Neuter. Castrate your pets. It doesn't sound as nice at the end of. But the fact, the I mean, his reasoning is one hundred percent true because we do have a freaking pet problem in this country. Like, oh yeah, pets are everywhere. Like, oh, and this isn't even like Greece or Costa Rica oh, yeah. where like you can find dogs everywhere. Yeah, I mean, they were killing dogs by the boatload before the Olympics in Greece. Oh, oh yeah, really? Yeah. Just, just get, to get them out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they were like, we can't have these everywhere. So they were just destroying dogs which is actually worse than cutting off their nuts so there we i've come full circle yeah That's i think if you could nicer. ask them they probably <laughs> <laughs> say hey i'd like to make a different decision hey buddy got a <laughs> yeah got a little decision for you we're There's either a, gonna cut off your nuts or just burn you yeah um take the nuts sir. yeah yeah there's a lady in my neighborhood who feeds feral cats and like oh there's one across. it's crazy and then like then when the cats aren't there vultures show up and start eating the food Oh, I thought oh. you were going to say the cats. I was like, oh. Well, the, I bet they. It's the circle of life they right might. there. They might. They well may. Oh, one of my one of my girls there, one of the cats they had. Uh, that's what we think happened. Vulture, a vulture guy? Yeah, something. Cause, well, I don't think vultures get things that are alive, right? Well, maybe a hawk or an owl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, a small cat. That's how <laughs> I worry about that little French bulldog. Like, I hear yeah. owls and stuff, and I'm like, at what point does an owl decide that's too big? Because uh-huh. he's not a big dog. No. Like, I, if I was an owl. I mean, like, that looks like a $3,000 meal. You know, $2,900 <laughs> yeah. dog steak. Yeah, owls hunt for sport. <laughs> they may. <laughs> yep. I got them. I'm never taking out anything this big. <laughs> if <laughs> anything does hunt for sport, it'd be an owl, right? Those motherfuckers are bad ass. And that dog's probably tastier now because it's like, oh, no testicles. Well, it wasn't yeah. just too long ago we saw one. <laughs> right? Yeah. Back oh, yeah. Over. oh, I can remember there was one night when my, my the other dog that's here. Uh, I won't use his name. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> messed up. But I remember when Wrigley was like itty, itty, bitty, like really, really small. I had let him out here to pee at night, and there was two owls that went batty when they saw this little meal yeah. coming across the yard. They're like, whoo, 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 yeah, whoo, 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 whoo. Like they're freaking out. And he looked at me, and that was when he was like, I'm willing to hang with you. Like, you're yeah, okay yeah, yeah, in my yeah. book. Because he panicked and ran up on me. And I was like, dude, I think this owl could try to eat yeah. this little dog. They might they might not succeed, but they'd try. I mean, he was if they're hungry. A handful of pounds. I mean, yeah. worth worth trying. Yeah. I mean, he's adorable looking. <laughs> he looks delicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what tastes better than adorable meat, yeah. you know? So, oh. Yeah, little dog got neutered. I feel Good for him. I feel bad for him. That's just... Did just you brutal? So during the process, did they confirm his hearing loss? No, nah, my vet is very, uh, very undercover with that stuff. He was like, "I can neither confirm nor deny that that dog is deaf without actually doing like a neurological test, like actually put probes, put sounds in the air, and see." Because he's like, some dogs just don't care. Yeah. Like, so he's just an asshole, or he's deaf. <laughs> 
I, I think he's I both. Understand, no, I, I understand yeah. what your vet's saying. Like he's like, I can't say for certain he's not dead. Understand like but, certain but, times like a dog's facing away from you and you make a noise and it doesn't do anything. Yeah. But there dogs, is a level, right? And people are like that too. Like you may not something may fall behind you, but you may know the context, so you don't think anything of it. You're like, Oh, that was my kid. Yeah, you don't get, you don't get me. Yeah, or so you just don't get startled from something. Yeah. yeah. But somebody smashes two pots and pans <laughs> together behind your head, like chances are unless you knew that was coming, you're you're yeah. there's gonna be a mild reaction, if not yeah. a large reaction. But like, he says that, you know, he's done little things and he he sees a reaction, which I'm like, well, yeah, he's probably pretty panicked. He's in a room he's never been in. Yeah. Right. Smells like a thousand dogs. Yeah. He's going crazy in circles, probably. Yeah. So he's looking around like, oh, snap. Yeah. So he's like, I can't I can't for certain say because I felt like he did react. And I'm like, well, I banged pans behind him and he didn't react. So you think that's a good indicator? And he's like, could be. <laughs> I'm like, are the, are the vets just like he likes me and hates you? I mean, most <laughs> do- like most dogs like. If you whistle, their ears do something. Like it's just, it's not even yeah. them reacting. It's just their DNA is like what? Like well, I explained to him the night before. I said if you don't start listening, I will take your nuts, and then we will try this again yeah. next week. Now the nuts have come off, so now we have to. Yeah, now you got to try again. Uh, try again. All right, you're gonna listen. That's what, what are you gonna take off? What are you gonna take off next? <laughs> his, his collar. One of those ears. <laughs> Since it's not doing anything. Yeah. (laughs) I'd be doing him a favor. Make him streamline. (laughs) Yeah. Those things are like big old bat. This is the fastest French bulldog ever. Yeah. Yeah, which is not saying much. never been so (laughs) aerodactic. Not saying He thought he could jump a fence beforehand. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dude, they're pretty aerodynamic except for those freaking satellites on top of their head. It's a ton of wind resistance. <laughs> yeah. A ton of wind They're resistance. They're concave, facing right the wrong yeah, direction. It slows you down. Yeah. That's all his are all his are parachutes. Yeah. They're not actually to here. They're air how, brakes. How, how old is like he? Like in a race thing? car. Nobody really knows. Nobody like knows. I got him from some That's right. Ukrainian lady in the In holler. West Virginia. Yeah. But rough estimate, year? 14 months. 14 months. Okay. Did the vet give you an estimate? Because the vets can kind of tell. He said he had to cut his leg and count the rings. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, he checked the nuts. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Cut, <laughs> cut one in half. I think that dog's actually two. Yeah. Uh, it experienced a fire back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see right here that the, <laughs> the Earth's polarity reversed <laughs> based on these rings right there. You know what we should do? No, uh, we shouldn't. Have it here. <laughs> yeah. I'm down. We're doing out of something. You have a couple beers. I noticed there's multiple beers. Because I found one beer, mm-hmm. and then I found another beer, but I was already so excited about the other beer that I just kept it for next week. For next week. Okay. And I, But this one had to happen. Because of the- St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. culture so thing. So this is, <laughs> this will come out almost, what, five, six days before St. Patrick's Day, but this will be our pre-St. Patrick's yeah. Day deli of- uh, what looks to be a Guinness, Guinness, which we've had before. Oh, what do we got here? So I'm curious as to Night. what this is. Ooh. Ooh. Well, and the funny thing is, is that I measure all delis. But this has been around, right? I don't know. I've never had it. I've never had it. The coffee? I, we I, have the Guinness Nitro Cold Brew Coffee. Beer with coffee and natural coffee flavors, which means not only is it got coffee in it, but then they faked it up yeah <laughs> with some more crap yeah so this could be that th- those coffee flavors that could be a a creamy flavor that could be a sugary flavor yeah that could be mm. a, a, a really coffee flavor what i what intrigued me about this is so many people say guinness tastes like coffee yeah it does not it does not no. guinness is about the perfect beer you and I have gone on record saying it's the perfect beer. It's the only thing that I would award the, a true deli. Yeah. It's my measuring stick for all other beers. I agree. So when I saw this, knowing that St. Patrick's Day is on the horizon, knowing that if you don't go buy beer by Monday, right? Right. All the Guinness will be sold out. Well, there will probably still be some of these turds floating around. Maybe you can get your hands on this. 4% alcohol, the Guinness Nitro Cold Brew Coffee. Beer with coffee and natural flavors. I don't see any mention of caffeine, so that's good. I'm not going to pour mine in a cup. We're, we're supposed to pour these in yeah. a cup and let's settle. Is what all the Guinness say, and then this one says it in a fine. No, print. it does it right there, and then doesn't it? 
It says, open the can and wait a moment oh. for the nitrogen to release. Pour into a glass tilted at 45 degrees. Watch the surge and settle and then enjoy. Yep. Yeah. Not doing that. I'm going to drink it straight from the can. Quick question. What's the alcohol content on a regular Guinness? Uh, like just under four or around four? <laughs> no. Four or five? I want to say it's close. What's it more? Oh, I was going to say look it up, but you don't have your computer. No, my brain's gone tonight. Dude, I can smell <laughs> the coffee just from Yeah, I'm cracking really that. disappointed in how much coffee stink is in there. I was hoping it would be can you, something Can you Google little, that, Stu? Yeah, yeah, I can take Because I am curious. I, I thought it was closer to five, maybe five and a half. Because so, four seems a little low. Four's. Let's see here. It is. That is quite coffee smelling. I'm very interested. Too much. Are you looking it up right now yep, for me, I Stu? Gotcha. I would guess four, two. Four three somewhere in there. It's, I'm yeah. guessing closer to five. So it's four two. A regular Guinness. A regular Guinness is four two. Boom. Wow. Oh well. Okay. So and this is a little bit less. That Guinness tastes like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. It smells like a coffee. coffee drink, like a nice coffee. Wow, that is coffee. So if you get, do you even need coffee in the morning if you have this? <laughs> Yeah, you should honestly still drink coffee, dude. Yeah, don't start don't start lying to yourself like well, if I have the Guinness nitro cold brew coffee every morning, I'll be fine. I mean, what's the caffeine count? Let's see here. I still taste a Guinness in it. I taste a hint of Guinness. Yeah. I taste a lot of coffee. My wife's gonna love this. It's yeah. I'm gonna have to save that last one for my wife. To me, well, I'll, go I'll for save. It. Go for it. Oh, okay. Well, to me, it smells more coffee than it tastes. To me, it still tastes half Guinness, half coffee. It it tastes like you've literally mixed a cold brew coffee in a Guinness. That's what it tastes like to me. It's not, it's not overly coffee flavored to my palate. I don't drink coffee daily anymore, and it's still it's not that much. It, it's not overpowering. But if you like coffee, I think you would like this. And if you don't like beer, you're gonna like. And, and you do like coffee, you would like this. This this is pretty yummy it's 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 funny if you you we have had see if you can re, if you remember this one but we had the, With the pbr, PBR. Yeah. you remember how we that is like it's it like a frappuccino yeah it like was sweet a lot of chocolate a lot of yep. sweat sweetness that's very much a frappuccino that's like your gateway that's not this no this isn't overly no. sweet this no. is more of a kind of a, a, a this is a coffee with a splash of cream it says 17 milligrams of caffeine oh fuck is that a lot? I don't know. I don't know. What that, I, I, yeah, I don't have any reference for no, that. No, it's it's low, but it's a little late for me to have any caffeine. <laughs> I didn't really think about that guy. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, uh, caffeine. I could I could drink a cup of coffee and go to sleep. Well, I'll counter yeah. it. Counter it with a couple of beers. <laughs> Uppers, downers. This. How about a speedball Guinness coffee? <laughs> it worked for Belushi. Oh, so you're not supposed to exceed more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day per the doctors and this has got 17 milligrams so that's good knowledge just fyi hmm so you don't need to bring your computer you can produce right from, from the phone. phone well it's because i i don't know maybe it's because i switched over who knows oh i hate being that person i hate to switch do over it. to he's got an iphone of now course. he feels like he feels like now it's awesome he, isn't it? now he's he's on the internet it's better it's so much better it's not so it's i gave so my review i like this um. Again, we, you and I, Brendan, have talked about Guinness being the perfect beer. Um, Absolutely. I don't know if I give it a five, the Guinness, but like four and a half, maybe five. If I if I don't give Guinness a five, it's because nothing deserves a five. Exactly. Yeah. But it is my measuring stick. Yes. Right. Now this is not nearly as good as a Guinness. No. But it's not as bad. It's not bad by any in my mind it's not bad i just don't know if i want to go four so i'm gonna go three and a half i think that's fair but i do like it and i would drink it again and i would recommend it i will buy this before i buy the pbr yeah yeah because, because the pbr is sweet. too sweet and you can only have one of those and they're a lot of fun for like one yeah this is this is better than that Stu. i, I would like you to go well i don't have anything to say about the marketing because it's brand worthy it's timeless it's got a guinness harp on it it's the <laughs> exactly. perfect marketing i've got guinness signs what am i gonna here? what am i gonna do to describe again if you didn't know what it, if you didn't 
read it and you just saw it in the corner and reach out and grab it, you think it was a Guinness. Yeah. It's hardly marked up. But leave it to Guinness to go with 15.2 ounces and not a full pint can. They've always done that. Yeah, and you know why? It's because the widget is yeah. in there so taking up space. Up. The, their bottles are 11.2 mm. or 4 or something. Yeah. They're, not even, they're not 12 ounce bottles. That's because they don't do ounces, right? Yeah. It's a metric thing. true. I think it's liters. Yep. Mm. So I hate cold coffee. Oh, well, you're going to love not, this. But yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying I don't <laughs> like – like everybody likes iced coffees, frappuccinos, and those types of things. The flavor's still there. I just don't like it cold. But I will say that, one, it does definitely smell like coffee. Two, I like the coolness. I always like the coolness of the nitro, you know, turning on the beer right there when you crack it open. But after that, it's creamy. It's smooth. It's not um, overly powerful. If you're a coffee beer drinker, you're going to like this, but – I'm gonna, I've always I'm always looking out for nitro pours. I just like the mouth the feel the smooth. Of, I agree. Smoothest. Yeah, that 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 velvety. Yeah, it's the best. Um, it does seem to leave a little lack of carbonation though. But that's what that's nitro, nitro does, does. right? Yeah. I know, nitro but it's, that's I'm just saying. Um, There's no CO2 in it. Three, three or CO3. Yeah, I give it. Th- there I, is no. CO3. I give it. A, <laughs> it's not in there. Uh, I could I could go three and a half. I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I'm not pushing you to do anything. No, I'm just, I mean I'm saying I could give it a three and a half. I could see these because it's for what it is, and I I yeah. probably made my own mistake just a second ago, which is said, do I really need to have coffee if I can have this in the morning? That's, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I stand by it. Yes, stick with the coffee. You fucking degenerate. One of these isn't bad. That's a good way to start your morning. One four, ABV beer like that's not gonna. If you had one of these first thing in the morning. What would you have next? Another one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because you know what's going to feel great? Everything you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And then about 1 p.m., you're like, ugh. Eating coffee that way, though? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have a cup of coffee, you have another cup of coffee. It's the, uh, it, it fires up and then lets you down. <laughs> so this beer right here, it's if you don't like the bitterness of coffee, like if the reason you're turned off by coffee is how bitter it is. If you're a black coffee drinker, you're gonna love this. Yeah, I am a black coffee drinker, so this or a splash of cream and a no, which is it's how I so on um, no. on the weekends I like a splash of cream, and then I like to deny myself the pleasure during the week. That's uh-huh. the Irish in me, I guess. Is it black? Because co- I do black coffee, but I just had a one little tab of sugar. That's not a black coffee. That's. There's coffee. no cream. Black in it. coffee is no sugar. sugar, no cream. Yeah, just straight. But what Brendan, I think what Brendan's saying, and don't only put right. words in your mouth is most people, and I'm the, I'm this guy. I put if I have a cup of coffee, I put two creams, two sugars in because I like it yeah. milky and I like it sweet. Yeah, it really helps cut yeah. out some yeah. of that bitterness. Yes. If you like black coffee, you enjoy the bitterness of coffee. Yeah. You are going to love this because that bitterness comes through. Yeah. Like it really does come through, and and some of that is because. Guinness is already has a, has a hint of bitterness to it, and then the rest of it is because it's been adulterated with coffee. So this is actually really pretty, pretty tasty if you're a coffee drinker. To me, it starts bitter and then finishes with a with a, a twinge of sweetness. Just a hint, yeah. yeah. And it's it's really really good. So I'm going to give a a non deli score in the world of coffee beers. This is the best I've ever had. Hands down. Yeah. This is a four and a half. Don't, Abacus, do not count this score. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Keep it together. <laughs> this is a four and a half as far as coffee beers go. I'm going to leave that half point because something could beat it. I want to give like that potential. Yeah. But this is the best coffee beer I've had because it really has coffee. But the Guinness base, such a nice base for a, yeah. a, a, a beer. And so I really, really enjoy this. I'm actually going to match all of you guys, because as a beer, this is not something I could drink all the time. Yeah, I'm, it's a novelty. Yeah, but I'm yeah. thoroughly enjoying it. It's basically like a black coffee with a hint of cream and a hint of sugar. This is really good. It's a three and a half yeah. on the deli scale. It's a four and a half on the cold brew beer scale, which does yeah. not count towards the deli. Three and a half. That's a fantastic beer. Yeah. yeah. The more I drink it, like I get a back end chocolate taste almost there is a yeah. chocolateness to it and i don't know if that's the guinness or if that's some fake flavor that they pumped in to kind of pump up that 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 chocolate that's in the guinness 
It says natural coffee flavors in it. So yeah, that means nothing. This the yeah. I think you nailed the nail on the head when you said this is more for people who like coffee that's coffee flavored. If you like the frappuccinos, this ain't for you. Go for the go for the so PBR. It's, it's not surprising that I said this is the best coffee beer I've had because you I am a black coffee. coffee drinker. So that's that's where I gravitate. I don't like a sugary coffee. Yeah. So this is. This is or if someone who's never had Guinness, you could break him in on this first. No, I would, couldn't do that to him because Guinness is perfect. <laughs> you get used to drinking this, and you're not going to like a Guinness. True. That's exactly right. But that's a it's a novelty, though. It's a yeah. three and a half novelty beer. So this is a four pack. You picked it up. What's, what are we looking at on the cost here? Uh, the exact same cost as Guinness. Which I don't. It's like ten ninety nine for a four bucks, pack, something yeah, like that. Ten and change. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's was, a four pack, but it's really like five beers. That cartridge must be a little bit bigger. I was mistaken. It's only fourteen point nine ounces in a pint can. I think what Brendan was is right. I think fourteen point nine is a le- half liter. Is that what it is? I think yeah. if you oh. if you Googled fourteen point nine ounces and converted the liters, I think because I think I have pint glasses that have that on there. Um, oh yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, and I think Brendan's right. That adds up. Yeah, <laughs> it happens <laughs> once in a while. Once in a while, but that's I'm surprised at that, man. That that's a good that's a good coffee beer. It's a good way to do the coffee and beer together. Yeah. Well, in the Guinness Foundation. I was trying not to be too much of a homer. Yeah. Which is also why I pulled it back to three and a half because I was like, I was loving it. And I was like, you're being a dumbass. You wouldn't drink this. It's coffee. <laughs> I like, I don't, I'm not a daily coffee drinker, but I like a little sugar and a little cream in my coffee because I, I do think black coffee is too bitter and I've never conditioned myself to like it. On the other hand, the sicky sweet stuff is way too much too. So like I'm kind of riding yeah. down that middle of like. You're not a Frappuccino guy. I'm not a Frapp guy. I'm not a extra mocha Light ice, caramel, I don't even know all this Orange stuff. Orange mocha yeah. frappuccinos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ely's favorite quote. <laughs> it's uh, close, but not quite. But 17 ounces is actually a half liter. Okay. Okay. So why did they come up with pints? Because pints are 16 ounces. I'm, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? They probably just came up with a pint, and then we're trying we just to put solve, the We're trying to solve the problems, and we're not, we're not doing it today. It's yeah. unfortunate. It's an off week. Yeah, it is. It what? is. So you were talking about starting your day with this. This, this is kind of a throwaway story, but it cracked me up. So I'm just okay. Go for it. Go so for there it. were these, there were these, these two guys in Australia. This was, this was just a couple of weeks ago, and this is just the kind of thing that I can see happening, unfortunately, where <laughs> these two guys in Australia, you know, they they wake up and they decided, bro, I've got a great idea. Let's I like take where this is going. <laughs> let's take this air mattress, throw a cooler of beer on it, and go float in the ocean, which sounds great. Now, if you've ever taken, if you ever go tubing and you've seen anybody try to do like a really large tube, you'll notice that wind and currents can really play havoc the larger something is. Dude, so let me interrupt your story yeah, to go do. off on this. Yeah. We used to go to Nags Head, me and my boys, every summer back when we were in our early 20s. We'd rent a house. Everybody throw in 100 bucks. It'd be 10 of us, and we'd party. And we had this one, my one buddy, Moose, he bought like a four or five-foot beach ball, like a massive Giant inflatable beach, beach ball. ball. And okay. he spent – this was 20 years ago. He spent like all morning blowing this son of a bitch up. Old school, blowing it up yeah. with his lungs. With, yeah. There was no, you know, cool battery power pump or anything like that. Ooh. He gets this MF or blown up, hits it one time. The wind's blowing from the beach oh, out. No. Takes it in the water, over the waves. He just, we literally watched it. <laughs> she gone. Just go <laughs> to the tiniest pin dot, gone. <laughs> All his air. Yeah. All his air. Like, to your point, it was a oh four or five foot <laughs> round beach ball on top of the water, no, which, you, you know, do th- it. it's that much surface that, you know, it's a small surface air on the water and the wind's blowing out. It carried that <laughs> thing out. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'd, lo- I'd love to know where that thing ended up before it popped. My, I, We had some buddies, we were going tubing once, and this one dude was like, 
I've got the greatest idea ever. He bought a pool, like an inflatable mm-hmm, pool, like mm-hmm. you put in your yard. Yeah. So we all jump in our tubes, and he jumps in, and he's like, this is awesome. And after, like, the first, like, 100 yards, we're, like, we're really putting some distance between us and him. And it's because the wind will just buff it that side yeah. and just, just Push him. keep it right where it is. And we were got these dudes ended up after like a half hour of trying to catch up paddling with us and everything. They ended up having to break the damn thing down, uh. and drag it through the woods all the way back to the back to the campsite. Like it was horrible. Yeah. And well, so these two guys in Australia, they wake up and decide they're going to do some day drinking. So I'm sure they had a couple couple Guinness coffees first thing in the morning on an air mattress and then decided, the let's get that air mattress put it out in the ocean we'll bring a cooler out there dude we'll just go right out beyond the waves yeah just chill yeah. and drink all day well, and lay out on the mattress their names are jackson and noah that's really their names mm-hmm. you know this yep there you go that's done but well <laughs> well jackson's an idiot <laughs> noah should have a little more boating skills i mean come on his parents were like he looks like he should have a boat he's noah <laughs> Jackson's like, shut up, bitch, drink a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So Jackson and Noah, that's funny you found it that quick. So all I said was two Australian guys with an air mattress. Did you Google two Australian guys with an air mattress? Uh, no, just Australians um, floating away on a mattress. Oh, so you came, made, you came to some conclusions. Okay. Good, but what's, there's some funny points to this. I'll let you finish it now, see if, if you hit them all. I, I doubt I, I doubt I hit them all, but I just I loved this story because these two these two guys go out there thinking they're all bright. They've got all their beers, they got all their stuff. They go out just beyond the waves and they're like, "Let's chill." So they start partying out on their air mattress, yeah. and Good it call. starts going with the current. This big air mattress and the wind, the wind just buffing ripping it, them, gone. So they're they're heading out and they're paddling. They're doing everything they can, panicking. By the way, that's the word. Like you were, you're not doing. You're not beating Mother Nature when you're with no. your with your little hands in the ocean. Like. And and if you're drunk and your your main goal is to drink, so immediately yeah. you haven't started panicking till well beyond when you should have yep. started panicking. Because part of you is like, ha, 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 this is awesome. Yeah, because you're chugging beers. Well, now they're further out into yep. the Indian Ocean, and they're like, wait, we got a problem. So they start paddling in. And it's not doing anything. They yeah. keep they keep going out. Now at this point they're starting to freak out. They're chugging beers. They're looking at their cell phones. Their cell phones are dying. They're like, this is not this is not working out. These guys literally drifted for three hours straight out. Oh my God. Over two and a half miles. They said they were good until they started to panic when they ran out of beer. Yeah. It's hilarious <laughs> till you run out of beer. <laughs> and then they said they ran out of beer and they started panicking. And they, they should um, have started rationing <laughs> their beer. But the funny part was yes. is that the uh, mattress started losing air. And about every 10 minutes, one of, one of them would of them have to get in the water and blow it up. And blew it up. Well, that was my <laughs> next question. Like every air mattress I've ever had leaks. Like yeah. it's just. We got to buy Intex. Noah was jumping off and I've had a mattress. leaky in text. <laughs> did it did it take a while or was it leaky from the get? They all leak after a while. Like that's my, my in texts have been pretty solid. Like that's my go to brand for yeah. gigantic air mattresses. I like the in text. But they where, all give up. Where are yeah. these Australia? So there's a story. It's Noah and Jackson. Those are the two guys on the mattress. Yeah. And it says their only hope because their cell phones were dying is their friend and his name is Tex Seek. T E X S E E K. Yes, Tech better was, than Tech said, Nine. Said he's like thirty or forty minutes away, and eventually came out and got him on a on a jet ski. Yeah, they ended up getting a flotilla. <laughs> How did they find them? They the, the last call he because they were waiting for reception because you're losing reception. Yeah, you're losing phone. They were able to get a call in to a flotilla of other drunks who had jet skis, and these dudes just were like, "It's a mission, yeah, grab yeah. the Fosters," and they headed out. And they actually found them and were able to save them. Wow. Like on jet skis, which yeah, is impressive. kind of an awesome find because you're two and a half miles out. Yeah, they're yeah. nowhere near Which through anything. the ocean is a nightmare. Yeah, depending but, on how chop it is. Yeah, like that's a rough ride. Yeah. The fact that these guys found them and were able to get them back in is, is why I can tell this story and laugh. Yeah. Because these dudes almost just, you know, died without any beer on an air mattress. Yeah. Like, like, Can you like, just imagine, like, the final scene in Titanic? Like, uh, 
Hey, uh, I haven't seen. What were their names again? Jackson and Noah. Hey, uh, I haven't seen you in a while, uh, <laughs> Shelly. How's uh, Jackson doing? Uh, you didn't hear? He's he, gone. He passed away. You guys seen Joe? Uh, uh, That's their cute name because they're a couple. Car, uh, car accident or, you know, no. Uh, do you have cancer? <laughs> no. Faulty air mattress. Yeah. Not enough beer. <laughs> he got drunk on an air mattress and drifted out to sea. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> What an awful story. In Australia. But only, only in Australia do you yeah. have texts come save the day. In Australia, or actually, though, a boatload of people would have shown up to that funeral. Like, <laughs> these guys are awesome. Probably in Australia have been like, well, that's how his great-grandfather went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's funny. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny, too. Jackson's dad died on a, sh- on a bale of hay floating <laughs> yeah. out in the ocean. That's very odd. Oh, it doesn't fall far from the I don't know. When you were saying the day drinking, I was like, this is what leads to Jackson and Noah's situation. Yeah. This is why you can't start your day. You make great choices. Jackson like and Noah up. didn't know anything about anchors, did they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is such an easy Let's fix. Let's tie this thing <laughs> off, maybe. <laughs> just... Uh, hey, big, when we get, like, thinkers. 50 yards out, let's just drop an anchor 20 feet down, and we'll be good. Big thinkers. Yeah. Big thinkers, Jackson and Noah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even bring enough beer. Like, I can't even give them props on any level. Mm-mm. And you know, like, that's, you know, like, the initial thought of, let's take the air mattress out to the oh, ocean. Oh, high fives. Fo- yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, they're <laughs> everybody's friends. They're calling friends. Hey, dude, yeah. guess what we're doing today? <laughs> We don't have a boat, but we're going to get their match. Which drink. is why their battery's dead. Yeah. Because they've been oh, yeah. hollering at all their boys. Yeah. Yep. Probably I mean, posting on Instagram. Yeah. Like. Hashtag better than you. Yep. Everybody's had that thought, though. About that life. I think we've all said, oh, I can take an air mattress and go float on it for a little while. But I've actually never thought about that. But, I mean, it makes sense. I just, dude, the ocean scares the bejesus out of me. Like, I don't, I don't mess with the ocean, man. Well, it like, wants you dead. Yeah. 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 Like it's gotta feed a lot of stuff. What first off, water in itself is dangerous, so we definitely don't respect it like we should. Like no. everybody you know, pools, lakes, ponds, everybody's just whatever. And even in the ocean, you're just like, I'm gonna go splash in the waves. It's like those waves are trying to rip your ass out to the ocean and feed you to everything out yeah. there. Like it's dangerous. That sand you're on was a boulder a million years ago yep. and it's been beating you yeah. to death. Yeah. The fact that it washes away from your feet every second. Yeah, exactly. Erases <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it really does show you how temporary everything, everything we do <laughs> yeah, everything is. is. You know? <laughs> and they're like, we can beat it with an air mattress and a case of beer. You go out around here, like down, you know, Virginia and North Carolina, it's like you step out in the ocean, like, do, do, do. And then, like, just a cliff falls off yeah, five shelf. feet out and you fall three feet and then. And you imagine the panic when you're out just 50 yards. You're like, it's 40 feet deep here. Yeah. And there's a current ripping us out. Like, this is a different world. And Australia world. has the, all the killer animals. Oh, like, gosh, that's all right. The sharks everything everything kills day. you. Well, yeah. Puppies kill you in Australia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not neutering us. No, they neuter yeah. you. In Australia, dogs <laughs> neuter you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't mess with the ocean, man. Like, it... It better be calm and clear if I'm going out in it. Like I ain't messing around. Yeah. Hey, can I can I dork out for a minute? What's going on? A minute. I, we had a listener reach out, and he asked me what I thought of the new DJI FPV drone. That probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. FPV FPV stands for first person view. So when you watch drone racing, and those dudes are wearing the dorky goggles, like the fat shark goggles, yeah. it's like they're sitting inside of it. Yeah, and they get to like fly around. Well, DJI is like. They're the ones, when you think of a drone, the image you come up with is the old DJI Phantoms. That's what everybody thinks of because that was the first commercial, like, for private use drone that, like, everybody bought. Okay. So when you're thinking of a drone, you are thinking of a DJI drone. And I had actually brought these guys up a couple weeks ago talking about how they're, they're, they're a Chinese company. That got busted because they were sending so all the info pictures. back right, right. <laughs> to Finger. China. Here's all the pictures you, you need. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a perfect map of the U.S. right here. Here's Brendan's house. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Well, one of the, I, we had a listener reach out. The Abacus reached out and was asking uh, 
what I thought of the new FPV drone. So I wanted to give him kind of my. Do you have one? Did you buy take. a new one? No, but we, you know, I, I talk about drones and he's actually been looking at drones. I don't know much about drones, but I, I can already tell you that drone is amazing. Dude, so DJI makes the best, like, consumer-grade yep. drones and pro drones. But the things they've done with technology are stupid. The advances they've made in drones. They're the ones who got it so, like, you no longer had to make it hover. They're like, no, just use GPS. It'll just yeah. stay right there. They're the ones You don't have to pilot it. Like, you send it to a spot right. and it just stays there. They invented the button on the remote that says, come home. Yep. So when you're uh, flying away <laughs> and you're like, I have no idea where my drone is. You it's go, out of eyesight, like. Hit home and it comes back and lands where it took off from. Yeah, precisely. Because when it starts, the GPS locks on it. Yep. It flies away. You and hit that button good. and right. it flies back to that coordinate. Hmm. It stays up about 20, 30 yards in the it air. Doesn't. and then You comes don't hit the down. button and it flies back to China and downloads all the information. <laughs> yes, exactly. no, it's, it's already sending all that. <laughs> and they also have the drones that like you can lock it on a on a thing like a person. Now, I've seen those. like you, like I see them advertising for the kids. You know, If you want to have a drone... And you lock on your kid, and it follows it around yep. while you're yeah. playing a soccer and, game. And, and a lot whatever. of you, it's funny. Like they they innovate, and then people are able to replicate it so easily. It's crazy how quickly you can buy a hundred dollar drone right now that will lock on. It's insane. Yeah. Okay. Like it's oh, they crazy. dropped in pr like when you got into it years ago. It was hundreds of dollars just to get up and fly. Now it's like it was a couple hundred my, bucks for like a. My, ghetto drone now you get a 30 dollar drone that will do I was gonna say, everything my youngest son got a 40 dollar drone that like it's so small it fits inside the controller it came with yeah and like it does all kinds of cool stuff but these dj they keep Ridiculous. innovating 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 so traditionally the fpv drones this is what people consider like a racing drone this is where they put on the goggles they haul ass and they right. race around and kind of do their thing like you're in this virtual world where you can like go and you're seeing what the drone is seeing through its camera and the latency is like non-existent from that drone to your goggle is milliseconds yeah. which it has to be because yeah but that's crazy though i mean those, if it's those, not milliseconds you crash it those racing drones do like 120 up to 130 miles an hour but what are they putting out to get that signal back to you that quickly it just doesn't cause cancer. That's all you need. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't possibly because you five G. You're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're fine. It's all <laughs> no. Who knows, dude? Who knows how they're beaming it back that quick? I mean, it's not like you have it mounted directly to your face in front of your eyes. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. That's <laughs> precisely <laughs> what you do. <laughs> what? That is precisely it. This this shooting these, radiation. These goggles your that come eyeballs. off the DJI has four different antennas: two up, two down, coming off of your face. But this thing, they're trying to bring it to, like, everybody. So back in the day, six months ago. <laughs> yeah, technology. That's how fast technology, yeah, technology. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my <laughs> day, two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so back in the day, you had to build your FPG, FPV drones because racing drones crash. They wreck their problems. So you have to you're constantly tinkering All with All drones them. do that. But yes. when you're racing them at 100 miles an hour, yes. Yeah, but DJI cool. makes them so that they're kind of, like, Little more sturdy, but you can still well, and replace you can part them. them out. Yeah, so they just came out with their first FPV drone. It's kind of a big deal. So he asked, you know, what are my what are my thoughts? And in particular, I want to compare it to their their Mavic Air Two. Of course, that's what I would compare it to as well. I've heard those. I've heard that before, though. So the FPV drone. I think I would still go with the Mavic Air, but the FPV drone has some amazing stuff going on. It's not your cinematography drone. You're not going to get, but it does do 4K video, does all this. It, it's pretty amazing what it can do, but it's gimbal set up, and the gimbal is the thing that allows it to. Holds like, the camera. Yeah, like right. if you take an owl and move it around, its head never moves, yeah. but you can just move its body in circles. That's nature's gimbal. Where they have gimbals, so the camera, no matter what the drone is doing, is spot on what it should be on. And it looks really smooth. Well, this doesn't have the gimbal that can move in all those directions because it doesn't need to. It's allowed to get yeah. a little choppy. I mean, you're moving right. very quickly. So FPV, the DJI one, it doesn't go 120 miles an hour. So that's like one knock against it. It only goes 90. <laughs> which is ridiculous so slow so like i could fly that into your head and kill you <laughs> yeah you know like that's a bit sketchy 
they've got the ability where like you can so you're not just the only dork you can like put a set of goggles on the dork next to you and you can both watch where it's flying nice kind of awesome. if you had a friend yeah yeah but you don't because you're looking at an <laughs> yeah. fpv drone mm. they're charging thirteen hundred dollars for this thing racing drones only fly for like a couple minutes five minutes tops because they want to keep them light and yeah this thing can fly for 15 minutes. Which pretty is long. That's pretty long. Game changer. But the Mavic Air 2 is doing 34 minutes, so it's a that's a that's a leap. Right. But it's also only going 50 miles an hour and doesn't beam to your goggles. So, but the Mavic Air 2 is a far better photography drone. And if you can get up to 50 miles an hour, I would argue that you're probably doing some awesome yeah. stuff. That's yeah. a pretty e- sweet either drone. way. The Mavic Air folds up, so you can put it in your backpack. It'll be about a little bit bigger than a cell phone. Yeah. And then you can like fold it out and fly it and off. And you can and hook the cell, your cell phone to your controller for the That's stream. what it watches. Yeah, yeah it yeah. sits on your remote. So I think I would get the Mavic Air too. But one the, the one I mean, thing, unless you're racing, that's the one. Well, so here's the crazy thing that I saw them do, and this is not included in the thirteen hundred dollar price. They have a standard remote, and everyone uses your standard RC remote to do this. And they came out with something that. I would liken to a Wii remote. Like so you just move your hand? You literally just move your hand. So it's like a virtual reality oh, remote. Wow. So you don't have to... Hold anything. You don't have to have your hand, fa- finger on a stick. You don't have to stick. learn. It's easier to learn. Totally intuitive. Yeah. If you buy this add-on. That's an add-on. Uh, of course. <laughs> but you can literally... <laughs> you want leather seats in that car? Uh, wait, wait does the drone come with fans or propellers, or you got to buy that yeah, too? No, it's got that. <laughs> but this remote, so you're in your goggles, and you've just got your hand out here, and you're just kind of moving it. Left to right, left up, to right. down, uh, forward, back. Now, and you can do all the things at 90 freaking miles an hour while it's beaming into your face. You're using your hand to fly it around. I guess it operates like a yoke on an airplane. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, but it does have a throttle. So you, the tri- there's a trigger. Uh-huh. That's your throttle. So your trigger throttle, and then you're flying up, down, left, right, just moving your hand. And so, and if you turn your body all the way around, the drone turns on that same axis. So you can literally be like, whoa, whoa, like turning nice. like a nerd. It's badass. And then it's got <laughs> a big brake button on it. There's a big rubber button big old where red your button thumb would be. Yeah. So, like, if you're going 90 and then all of a sudden you come up on somebody really quick, you slam that and that thing will stop and hover. Nice. <laughs> I mean, how sick is that? So, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see that they have taken the whole mm. FPV game and they've totally innovated with this remote, which means in six months, everyone will have a similar remote. Yeah. But this is a game changer. Like, you're getting 4K video. You can go 90 miles an hour. You can fly for 15 minutes, and you can get a remote that's completely intuitive hmm. to fly around and do your stuff. I'm kind of psyched about that drone. That's going to change. It's pretty cool. That's going to change things. So, But he, in six months, it will be outdated. Yeah, but well, he wanted so, my take, so I was going <laughs> to. Outside of aerial photos and racing, why would I go get a drone? So I have I used to buy little drones that right. didn't have photos or just the FPV, fl- flying? just for flying, tons of fun. It's just, like owning. Why would yeah, you own a mm-hmm. remote control airplane? Well, just, that's or just a remote it. control car. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though, if I'm going to go fly it, just to fly it, I'd get one that didn't have video, didn't have now, all see, that good stuff. But for your job, a lot of people that do oh, have your job, yeah, yeah. they have them. Like, now, well, the would, photographers do. Yeah, you would not yes. want the FPV drone for that. You would take again. That's why. Yeah. So the FPV drone starts at thirteen hundred. The Mavic Air two starts at eight hundred. Yeah. And I would argue that that's probably a better drone for most people because right. you can still but, get up to 50 miles an hour yeah, and do all that crazy I mean, stuff. Outside of job related, which I know there's tons of uses for them, but if I was just going to go fly to fly, then you I would probably get some of these, right. just race them or, or just fly to fly around like an old remote control airplane. You know, but I wouldn't, I don't know if I need the video camera and all that good stuff. You end up liking the camera. Like, yeah. I remember my wife was like, she was like, I think our gutters need to be cleaned. And I was like, oh, I'm not certain. Let me go check. I like, yeah. took the drone up and was like, no, I could see how you could say that. You could find, <laughs> you could find uses for yeah. it. Okay. You can That's find uses. Saying, yeah. yeah. Basically, you can, you can alleviate ladders unless you need to physically do something. Yeah. <laughs> so Brendan, I guess Brendan's poor dog. 25%. Brendan's poor dog hates it when he hovers it right behind him. <laughs> he yeah. just can't see it or hear it. Oh, that, that dummy. <laughs> my other dog will try to take it out of the sky. 
at the risk of scars all over its face. So is it, are these drones just like the ones you see on TV advertising where they're like, oh, you can throw it in the water and it'll just take off even if it gets wet and survives all that no, good stuff? No, I mean, this this drone is made more for speed and for dork. My, uh, I got a buddy, Billy, who uh, is in the drones, and he was having a house built, and he would go over once a week and just take aerial photos of it. And when the realtor found out about it, the realtor was like, that's awesome. Can I use your photos? Right. And cut them a deal like for some extra add-ons if okay. they could use the nice. photos. Yeah. Yeah, cool. and that's stuff like that. I'd do that, the Mavic series, yeah. of the DJI, because... You can fly for 34 minutes, and you can fly miles away. Yeah, out of your vision. Yeah. I could literally go up and Or is that elite? Isn't that illegal? Now- You got to get into airspace. Yeah, you have to get a license. Yeah. Anything but I mean, still, I think still you have to keep it with an eye shot. Yep. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not keep it with that. They, they allow well, it either, to go miles. Yeah, but even, um, you have to get a, even the uh, you know model rockets. You can only get certain ones because at, at a certain stage they go high enough to where yeah. they show up on radar. Yeah, you need an FAA license if it's over a certain weight. And so DJI makes one they call the Mini, which is literally one ounce less than the weight than the weight <laughs> limit. Yeah. And this thing has 4K camera, can well, fly around. It, it allows hand gestures. Like if you stand in front of you, like you can like you can move your hands apart and it'll go to a widescreen image and you can like push it back with your hand. It'll back up. To get it. It's crazy well, the stuff that they can do. That's it's crazy good. because I've seen them a lot out on jobs where like people use them for various things. It's like even the big ones, once they go up a, a hundred feet and move over a few hundred feet, like you lose them. Like you can't see them. Oh, with yeah, my yeah. old drone, that was the scariest thing is you would, I would be flying it and the connection would cut out. Now the connections have gotten far better since the one that I crashed into the ocean and lost forever. See, there water. it is, the ocean. Yeah, again, damn, damn ocean sucks everything up. If you want to hear that story, go back and listen to the Requiem for a Drone <laughs> yeah. episode. There's a full recap of that incident. But I remember I used to take that thing up, and I would be watching on my on my phone that was on the on the remote, and I yeah. could see kind of what it was seeing. Yeah, but you had no way to tell which way it was moving or which way you were facing, and so you would just end up having to stop. You would stare in the sky until you. And then you would just like hit right and have it just drift right until you could pick out a speck in the sky that was moving right. Yeah. And be like, okay, if it's moving right, yeah, that's good. Then it's facing away from me. But if the speck in the sky is moving left, then it's facing the opposite way towards me. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how you would figure it out. And then you would have to kind of negotiate it back in. That was before you could just push a button yeah. and come home. So well, that, th And that was a really that was scary. That was real analog. Yeah. yeah, it was really scary feeling when that thing was just gone. Well, I think it's kind of cool, though, if if I remember correctly. I I know I know in NASCAR this season, and I also know in the NFL, I think in the NFL last year, they're replacing that wire camera. Thank goodness. With a drone. I think they had some drone shots. Yeah, because an overhead view of the quarterback from behind the line, you know, but using and the, real the, the video game views. Yeah, yeah, and even and then the um, the update with that was the the 4K, like there's the the new shots that are coming from cameras, like the camera, like it's like in the last two years, all of a sudden, not the TVs haven't changed. What's coming from the original image that the camera? You know being, what's it's different like about different. the 4K? Like, oh my God. The 4K view that they're showing us, all they've really done, obviously it is crisper, but they're allowing the things in the background to become fuzzier. So it's very much how you look at things. Right. Which is, I remember when... That's I, more of when, a software upgrade, But though. Vizio, like I remember what Vizio and a couple other TVs when they first started doing it a couple years ago was... What threw me off was, yes, it was crystal clear. The grass was greener than ever I'd seen on a television, but the... Stuff in the background was just as clear as the guy standing right there. And in front that's of I was the like, problem. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look right. Right. It, it looks fake. Me out. That looked horrible when everything was crystal clear. But now they're doing it exactly as your eye sees it. Yeah. And it's in 4K and I'm still a little. So now when you're focused on something, it's super, super crisp. Right. Cause but the stuff behind it becomes more faded. And, and that's going to take me a little while to get used to. But I'm at least more willing to accept that than when everything was yeah absolutely clear because I was like I can't because it gets a kind tolerate of a, yeah uh, like a 3D almost 
It was like oh, no, soap flat. operas, yeah. but far worse. Uh, kind it of was hall, horrible. Kind of Hallmark Channel. <laughs> Bad uh, production. Meredith Baxter Bernie. That's my girl <laughs> right there. <laughs> Do you remember when it was like it was like Stamos and yeah. Meredith Baxter yeah. Bernie? And they did everything on the Hallmark <laughs> Channel, man. It's like good looking man. Oh. Like, totally like a woman you could relate to. Yeah. It was like those two did everything. Oh my God. They should be Family Hall Ties, right? Yeah. 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 They should be Hall of Fame Hallmark Channel yeah. people. Like they should start their Mount Rushmore with Stamos and Meredith Baxter. Well, Brady. it is what it's March. I think the Hallmark's gonna start their Christmas movies already. <laughs> it should be coming up soon. <laughs> that channel kills me. It is crazy we're almost uh, three months from Christmas, like we're we're a quarter away through the year already. It's crazy. Oh, real quick though, You're three quarters from Christmas. Um, yeah, next a quarter away, three, three months. We're, <laughs> we're like, no, what? we're three months <laughs> from Christmas, like past Christmas. Oh, past Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. I was like, whoa. No, I'm not that bad at math. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> so, so what is it? Next week? Next weekend we're supposed to do the time change. Clocks go spring, no. for, spring forward. This coming Saturday. This Saturday, yeah, yeah. spring oh, forward. Oh, it's this week. This weekend. Yeah, this Saturday. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But, oh, that's fantastic. Apparently, they they might, Congress is going to vote and do away and just go back to straight daylight. Time, like, no time change. It's gotten bipartisan support. Which one, do we, which one do we stay with? Do we stay with the one that we're about which to change to? Forward. The one that we changed forward to. We would That'll be the away. one. That one's much better. Yes. And I hate I hate when we turn the clocks back. I'd rather yeah, be dark till 8 o'clock every morning. If that's what it takes to get extra hours in the evening. Yeah, because we, we none of us get off work until 5 or 6. And when half the year it's dark, that's Even a Even if you get off at 4, you'd rather have it more. Like, I'd rather drive to work or go to work in the dark. I like than, daylight. I think there's still somewhat, I can't remember, if there's still somewhat of a small time adjustment. Like, we're talking seconds or minutes. Yeah. The, but you still, no, that's what you're the, not a whole, whole hour That's what change. leap year is for. Right, Every yeah. four years, you get to make up a day. So you talking? They're gonna they're gonna adjust it by like thirty minutes and then call that know. the fact. I don't know. I just I just was like, I'd love to have not deal with the time change. Top of the hour, five thirty. Well, we <laughs> recently changed it. it. Used to be six months long, I think, if I remember correctly. When we were kids, it was a six month daylight savings, and now it's four months. I don't know. Everything was irrelevant then. Everything yeah. was better. Well, everything was longer, right? They do it during the winter. Remember, your kid yeah. like summer was forever long. Now it's like. Done. So I, I it's because you're busy. Someone gave me an. <laughs> I heard an. I wasn't busy last summer. I heard an explanation of why that is. The older you get, the faster time seems. But do you know? So this this explanation was the first one that ever made sense to me. I'd like to hear it because I have no idea why. And it's it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it. I'm that gonna, checks out. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> so they said it's because when you're a kid, right? Like, you've only had one. Say you've had four birthdays. Right. So now it's like it takes forever to get to your birthday. Yeah. Now you've had five birthdays, so it, it's a little bit easier to get to the next one because you have more reference yeah. of what a birthday was. So by the time you're 40, you've had 40 birthdays. They like they come up on you quickly because you're yeah. not looking forward to it as much because you've experienced it more. Yeah. And so they're saying that that is why the perception of time changes so much because your experiences happen so much. So Christmas... When you're young, right. you Doesn't only happen. remember three Christmases, so it's a really big deal. So you're waiting forever for Christmas, and so that expectation of waiting. Yeah. But when you've had forty Christmases, but should I get excited? No, you just right don't. after again and start. When's the next one? When's the next yeah, one? You get well, excited. Well, as a kid, you kind of do. Yeah, you right? do. But I'm just saying, like, should I, I start thinking that way now to slow down time? You can't because you're hardened. You can't help yourself because <sighs> you've already experienced all these Christmases. Yeah, true. And so when you when you don't have as much to reference. You get excited more earlier. Things take longer. Well, it's like for kids. I mean, their structure of life up until this past year was go to school for nine months, have three months off. Like, that's all you've ever known th for summer. Like, that's yeah. the – then when you start the workforce, it's like, first off, there is no summer. It's just – I'm Dagger. Get, guess what? <laughs> I get up and go to work every day for eternity. Right. Shocking like, they won't pay me to take three months off. Shocking. Well, if you have the right job. Yeah. Teacher, yeah, mm -hmm. go teacher. You know what? That first summer probably felt a lot longer. Yep. Than the tenth yeah. summer to a You're teacher. Right. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great example. They, they're already thinking of the turnaround. And like, yeah, that first do, summer was like, oh my gosh, look at all yeah. this time. But as you've experienced it more, you have more reference to it, more times remembering, 
and things just seem to move faster because you're not making as many memories. It's not as special. Everything condenses. That was that was I I, I kind of butchered it, but I think you get it the kind of makes sense. I mean, I'm, the first time I heard that, I was like, oh, I think I'm starting to wrap my head around why things yeah. move faster because reference points creep up on you because you're not as excited about them you've experienced them more i mean your birthday was I know, forever I'm away i'm still looking forward to sex every time yeah but that first time <laughs> took you 16 to 18 years right yeah. that first time was 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 in your case 23 years yeah i mean it was <laughs> special yeah it was very you know, special. sex isn't if you're doing it right isn't on a you know, calendar schedule. It's not like I'm once not doing a year. It, right <laughs> <laughs> it is. I I'm fully it, it aware. It follows the moon phases. Like the, the clocks are changing. Right. Yeah, the clocks are changing. We got to go have sex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that time of year. I do have some buddies that are on that schedule, and God, uh, God help them. Yeah. And I bet the first couple of times they waited for that day. Yeah. Now it probably goes by pretty quickly. Yeah. And they're more tolerant of it. It's it's. It's whatever you get used to, I guess. It's how many memories you have in the bank that can be tied to a time or a day. They become less special over time. You've experienced them more. Even the ones you don't remember experiencing. And that's a reference to what? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the time, time is moving faster for y'all, right? Like, I, you know dude, what? Yeah. I, we're I'm, halfway through March. Like, I'm it's 27 crazy. now. Again. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. I think there's like like I guess it just depends on what's what's happening in your life, but there are like I, I can definitely think of like three and four year stretches that went by in a blink, and then others that just kind of seemed to like. If you started a new job today, this first year would be the longest year of that yeah. job. Yeah, right. Yep. By year ten, it's a blur. Yeah, you've yep. experienced it over and over and over and over again. It's just it's the amount of experience that makes it. Well, less. and it's weird how time like. Like, for me, I can – I've had this conversation with my college buddies all the time. Like, 22, 25 feels like yesterday and a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. It feels like two different – life. it feels like a whole other lifetime, and it feels very recent all at the same time, which is weird. Yeah, I don't know how mm -hmm. I would – like, if you drop me back in college – how long would it take before you reset and we're <laughs> just back in college? Because yeah. those first, that first, like, two weeks – Oh my! That was a yeah. That was a, an eternity of fun. Talk about a, I mean, a life changing moment. Like I was just talking about, for thirteen years you did the exact same thing <laughs> through school, and it's yeah. like, and you know, for a lot of people, college is the first time you know away. going away, moving yep. out. You know, like I think for most, yeah. yeah. Like I struggle. Not it's not a struggle, but like I look at my kids. And it's a struggle to look at your kids. You might want to take what that I'm talking yeah. about. That's rude. Talk, you yeah. have girls. You shouldn't tell them that. When I'm it's talking rude. about the, the, the timeline and Where's how my things dad go jokes? fast. <laughs> dad yeah. jokes come yeah. out. Sorry. Yeah. But no, I'm like, it, it, they're, they're getting older. The time is clicking by and you see them growing. But at the same time, it's like you look at them and like, well, just yesterday. And the same, like I can picture and treat them as the same as they were, like three and five years old. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I mean, the other day, first time in my life, I'm sitting, sh I'm sitting in the back of the car. Emma's driving, and Penelope's riding shotgun. It's and I'm crazy. like, she ever, she has a driver's license. She's got learners. That's, I can remember. Then you, the then you just perjured yourself. That's illegal. I can remember. Well, we didn't the look it up. Time. We didn't know if it was or was. I was like, screw Adults it. Adults supposed <laughs> to be in the front seat. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, well, but, but I remember the first time <laughs> I met Stu's Stu's daughter. I was she was literally an infant. Yeah, and like that was not long ago. Right. So that from it doesn't seem like that went by the fast. The her that time frame of when she was younger didn't go by that fast. But the, but you look at her or you look at your kids. And you're like, holy shit, she's driving. Where did the time go? Yeah, it's all. But that's oh, yeah, like Brennan and I have kids that are going to start middle school next year, and it's like they're halfway through school. Like yeah. But every day they're experiencing new things. Yeah. That yep. drags time out. If yep. you're having new experiences all the time, time drags out. Yeah. When you start doing the same thing, time moves. That's the difference. That's well, I just want to tell you guys, that's, this is yeah. probably we're going to change things up. This is the last podcast. We're going to do something new. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying we're doing the same thing over and over again. No, we have to do this. <laughs> As a yeah. reference. <laughs> but that's it. If, you're, if your life is full of new experiences, then things seem new all the time. Time is much slower. Yeah. Because there's everything's more important. When yeah. you get into the doldrums, 
and things are the same. The workforce. Then days creep up on you and move by because you don't have as many things to reference that were exciting. I mean, how short do weeks feel for adults in our 40s? Like it's. Fortunately for me, my weeks have really slowed down. <laughs> I, have, I have really. My weekends move very yeah. quickly. But my weeks are now becoming like it's never the same thing. It's crazy. Mm. Like I'm constantly losing I, it. I'm, I, yeah, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm in real estate, but the. Like I lose track from from Thursday to Sunday, I lose track. But at the same time, it seems like the last time we did a podcast was eons ago, and it's only been oh, oh eight days. Yeah, we only do it once a week. Every time I'm here, I feel like we just did one. <laughs> <laughs> We've but been this, doing it for six this years. Is six years of doing yeah, it. So, Stu's yeah. been doing it for a little over a year, yeah. year and a half now. Yeah. Maybe pushing, yeah, a year and a half, a little yeah. bit more. So I mean, it's starting to. It's still new. I like it. Good for you. Someone has to like you. I'll just keep, I'll just keep talking. You're the one guy. <laughs> Someone's got to enjoy doing this week in and week out. So, like, all right, here's an example. I'm going to give a shout-out to a guy. Sheldon, I hope you're doing well, man. Congratulations oh, man. on the new gig. I'm pulling for you. I'm psyched for you, man. I think you're uh, you're on, on to good, good and exciting things. But Sheldon's life, he's a listener and used to work at my company. And give a shout-out to him because I, I didn't know he was a listener. And then when he was leaving, he was like, Love the show. I was like, love that. That's so awesome. he's getting ready to start something new and exciting. But he's starting a new job, right? <laughs> so his job, his his life just things things seem there's more. There's more out there. Right. Our life, we've been doing the same thing for a while. <laughs> things are moving by. Yeah. Like decades will go by. Sheldon's got a whole new experience, starts over. That's good yeah. for him. It's right it's so it's so crazy you say that because, you know, on a personal note, obviously uh, it's been two years since I got divorced. The last two years seem not to have gone by very quickly. It's been all new experiences. New experiences. And it's just like, okay, well, rolling with it. But I get it. You know, the 15 years selling billboards went by in a heartbeat. Your next divorce <laughs> will be totally different. That's it. Science. You, <laughs> but the second divorce, the time will seem shorter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm it's saying. Second, yeah. Yeah. Science. <laughs> this is science. You'll this have is. something to, to push it up against. <laughs> I'm glad we were yeah, able we're, to solve a first world problem yeah. in this episode. It took us still an hour 35, <laughs> hour 36, but we, I think we got to the bottom of, of one there. <laughs> oh, well, that's good stuff. Sheldon sounds cool. Sheldon is cool. He's, he's, he's on to better th- or newer things. I don't want to say better things. I assume for him it'll probably be better. He's going to go do awesome stuff. Did he tell you how much you like me? He said, oh, yeah, he said you're the best. Of course. He said there you're the best. <laughs> That's always what everybody says. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how often I get that. They're like, yeah, and tell Troy hello. He's the best. Like, cool. <laughs> cool. I got to run a joke with my younger son every day. Almost every day I ask him when he gets out of school, whether it's going to school. I'm like, did your friends ask about me? He's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> why not? They, they should. I'm pretty awesome. He's like, no, Dad. It's very, very <laughs> odd that they're not asking about you. Mm. Everyone on I'm this show cool seems to. Listeners do. They love you. The audio dreamboat. That's what they say. That's what Taylor says. And he would know. The guy has the be- a better ear than anybody Yeah, else. he does. He's got an ear for it. There's no doubt certainly. about that. <laughs> He spent his whole life in headphones, making yeah. music, doing great things. He knows he knows talent when he hears it. And that's why we love him. Yep. Thanks for just letting <laughs> me hang on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I do also want to give a shout out. If anyone's getting a mortgage in, in Georgia, Virginia, you got to reach out to Screen Door Mortgage. They are going to make your life very easy. When you it get comes the whole to house, yep. too. Not just the screen door. We touched on that. <laughs> we did. You don't yeah. just finance that. But he, he, he makes life very easy in what is a difficult process. So please do reach out to Screen Door Mortgage. Ask for Jimmy. It'll be easy because I, I assume Jimmy will probably be the one to respond to and you. Do, <laughs> and, and do it sooner than later. I think uh, the next nine months, gonna, things are going to be going north on the interest rates. Hey, we have an insider here, so listen to him. That is very true. This man is in the industry. Yep. So if you need a mortgage, reach out to, uh, reach out to Screen Door Mortgage. If you need a realtor and you're in the Richmond area, you can always hit up Stu. It's probably not a bad idea, too. Yeah. I never promote, I never really promote myself on this. I'm not trying to. You should. Well, then I just did. So uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Holler at Stu. You can reach out to us at insidethepowderhouse.gmail.com. Tell us what you're looking for. You can reach out to Stu there. You know, tell us how much how, how many beds, mortgage. how many baths you need. Yeah. <laughs> tell us how much Screen Door Mortgage has approved you for. Yeah. And we'll pass that information along to Stu. 
and then uh, he'll get you a house, and he'll tell you sweet, sweet jokes <laughs> while you're looking at homes. <laughs> what he'll a play the podcast for you while you're traveling around, checking things out. It's what you were going to do anyway. Exactly. True. You may as well be hanging out with the dude. I, I got you. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm pitch that. Yeah, dig you, it. Not only can you find your dream home, you get to hang out with one inside the pal house, guys. Win lose. Win. <laughs> I was gonna say win win. Mm. I see what you did there. Negative five points, Brendan. Yeah. Oh, 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 right at the end. Okay, I'll take this episode down five. That's unfortunate. That sucks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. We uh, we do appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. If you haven't had a chance to rate and review. We would always like you to do so. Apparently, it matters more on iTunes. So if you're one of those iTunes people, do it over there. If you're somewhere else, I don't know. Like Joe the Chef was like, how do I do it on Spotify? I was like, Joe, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you can always reach out to us at InsideThePalletHouse at gmail.com, or you can find us on Facebook. we got the Inside the Pallet House page. Or you can always find us on Instagram and Twitter at ITPH Podcast. If you are one of those people that finds themselves in the 1%, Boy, howdy, are we far from it. <laughs> we would love to have your money. You can always send money to our Venmo account, which Troy will tell you what it is now. At Inside the Pout House. Any amount of money, so long as it's $10 so we can go buy a deli, because that's what we're going to use it for. Ultimately, and, yes. And yeah. we will give you a shout-out. Yes, that's yeah. how that works. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a good week. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Also, oh. shout-out to M4K. It's all again. again, yeah. We've been giving out Huge big week. checks, and uh, Brendan and I were on a call last night. Yep. Stu, were you on that call? No, I wasn't, but they gave I out I saw a guy big... named Stu on there, but it was just a caller. But Brendan and I were on the call giving out big checks to a lot of organizations. We are going to name M4K, has naming rights to uh, the Ass Childhood Cancer Kitchen, so we're excited about that. That's awesome. That's yeah. so awesome. Um, so, you know, if you want to learn more, go to M4K, Facebook, you know, check them out. You know, it's huge in, in, in the inside the pout house world and uh, we can't speak highly enough about it much bigger in the families' lives of those children yeah. that need help i mean they told us last night on the call i mean we basically they have a big project and we kept them open during it so i mean it was awesome it's good stuff that's the truth is this song ending no it's no. still going yeah that's this song goes sorry <laughs> <laughs> i just looked i was like what's this now, thank you guys so much for tuning in we'll be talking to you next week cheers cheers Peace, Peace out. out. <laughs> go Irish. <laughs> I was going to give you the go Irish, but that's okay. Wow. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? <laughs>